Okay, so in a sense, we can take this initial example here uh, as being a no-arbitrage type example where we say that the we limit the value of the futures price today to be 30 and we limit the future movement up to 33 or the futures price down to 28. And then in a situation where we have a one month expiry or maturity on the call option on the futures, where the strike price is 29, where the interest rate is 6%, can we work out the value of the call option? We could use this no arbitrage approach, okay, which sets out the basic steps of setting up a riskless portfolio where we're not interested in the futures price per se, but rather the change in the futures price because that reflects a change in the margin account. At all futures exchanges, a margin account, the change in the margin account is gives us the day-to-day -day change in the value of the position. Okay, so to perform a delta hedging type exercise using the futures, we're saying what is the change in the futures position? We multiply it by delta. Delta is the position in the change in the futures. And then we have the option, the value of the option itself. And we create the risk list. We impose risk neutrality by imposing equivalence on the two outcomes, whether the futures price goes up futures price goes down right we get the same we make these two outcomes equal to each other in cash terms that leads us to solving for a delta of 0 0.8 meaning we should go long delta because delta is a positive 0 0.8 we take a positive 80 percent stake into futures position here and a short position delta futures position and a short position in the call option okay uh, we could have we could set out the uh, estimation here of the value of course it's very artificial in the sense we're assuming one step um, uh, tree in in reality to make a Cox Ross Rubenstein tree work and this is a, a version of Cox Ross Rubenstein to make the Cox Ross Rubenstein tree work properly we probably need a thousand or maybe two thousand or five thousand uh, time steps and for to get a level of accuracy uh, to a more robust level of accuracy possibly go up to fifteen thousand okay now we could also have taken these two uh, formulae and uh, estimate the value of the option in this instance uh, we could have reconstructed the parameters given here. Again, the futures price of 30, F, the value of the futures in one time period, 33, or down to 28, strike price of 29, expiry of one, of one month. Okay, so um, in setting this out, um, we could have organize our parameters a little bit differently we could have said what if u was 1.1 d was 0 0.933 risk free rate six percent time period equal to one over 12 the value of the futures the value of the option the futures price goes up four the value of the call option if the futures price goes down zero then using these two formula we could a estimate the risk neutral probability and then apply the backward recursion and got the same value of one dollar fifty nine two for the call option okay now a uh, question then arises how do we move from this one step binomial tree using a risk neutral approach and using a no arbitrage approach to using let's say uh, at least initially a multi-step tree and um, perhaps starting with a, a two-step tree so going from the one step to the two steps okay um, how do we accomplish that and okay let's so I'm gonna go into a spreadsheet and set out a, a question replicate a question from John C Hall and I'll just set that out let me see where I can find that 
Okay, so I've got a plan is take a standard type textbook question based on binomial futures. Okay, so evaluation of an option uh, of a futures option. And I'm setting it up in a two step tree. And then I'm going to um, just follow the uh, basic formulae and then extend this out to where we have 100 steps or 200 steps. Uh, so basically taking a very elementary example and then illustrating how we go from the elementary to to or true to a much more complex VVA uh, estimation where we use 100 steps or 500 steps or 1000 steps and we look at some convergence then between this binomial framework for the futures option and for the black model. Okay, so the, the black model is pivotal in terms of estimating op, um, options and futures in, in the European context. And we want to look at, at American style options also and generalize this limited instance of the two step tree up to a much higher number of steps three okay so let's take the basic numbers here futures price currently 60 volatility 30 percent the risk free rate eight percent per annum use a two-step binomial tree to calculate the value of a six-month european call option on a futures with a strike price of 60 if the call option were american would it ever be worth exercising early Okay, so if we did have these parameter values, futures price 60. Now in this instance, we don't specifically have a U and a D. And we're not given specifically that the stock price or the futures price will go from 60 to this value or 60 down here. In fact, what we're told is uh, we're given a volatility, which is equivalent to the black shows volatility or the black model volatility. And we have a 30% and the 30% denotes the annualized um, standard deviation of the return. Okay, the standardized, uh, the, the standard deviation, so the annualized standard deviation of the return on the underlying futures. Okay, so from Cox Ross Rubenstein, we know that u is equal to e time e to the power where e is the exponential e to the power of sigma sigma 30 uh, percent multiplied by the square root now this is so that the square root of the time step so we're uh, instead of it being um one divided by two actually this should be um 0 0.5 given that the maturity is equal to uh six months the futures price 60 volatility 30 risk free rate eight percent it's a two step binomial tree six months so the entire maturity of this option is six months that's 0 0.5 0 0.5 divided by two would give us the time step and so the value we get yes is 1.16 but in fact this square root here should be square root of 0 0.5 divided by 2. So I'll just come over here to illustrate how actually this figure should be obtained. The 1.1618. Okay, so if I come across for a moment, okay, and we look at u here, it is e exponential e to the power of the volatility multiplied by a4 a4 is the dt. It's the t divided by n. The 0 0.5 divided by 2. That would give us 0 0.25. Taking the square root. Anything to the power of 0 0.5 is like taking the square root. And the value we get, yes, is 1.16. Okay. So in reality, this figure here is the square root of 0 0.25 because it's 0 0.5 divided by 2. And that would yield us a figure of 1.1618. Okay, so maybe I'll write that down. Okay, so really what we would have here is u would be equal to, u would be equal to exp, open bracket, the volatility 0 
multiplied by zero. Uh, in fact, I'll put point five open bracket point five divided by two to the power of two uh, zero point five close bracket. Okay, that's the that's what we would have here. So the u here is equal to e to the power of zero point three, correct? multiplied by 0 0.5 divided by 2 and we take the square root of that okay so uh, then we proceed we uh, d is equal to 1 over u that's typical and that would yield us a figure again if we go back and check over here uh, d equal to so using the same parameters 1 over the 1.16 would give us 0 0.86 okay so that's what we have here 0 0.86 and then p would be equal to 1 minus u uh, minus d over u minus d again where are we taking that from that's coming from before p is equal to 1 minus d over u minus d okay so that's something uh, we need to take note of okay so we we have p here equal to 0 0.4626 and to verify that, again, I followed in line 1 minus uh, d over u, u minus d. Okay, gives us the 0 0.46 value. Okay, then uh, how do we generate the tree? In a two-step tree, in a two-step tree, if we are starting value, with 60 how do we go from 60 to the next futures price the next futures price so basically what I've tried to do here is set out the tree and maybe I should mark these values here so the I'm going to mark in green the future prices okay and I'll pause okay so basically what I've done here is I've set out the futures uh, price tree ignore the other um, black uh, characters here for the moment we have the futures price tree and we're saying that the futures price will start at 60 in uh, three months time if the full time period is six months then the first time step in the two time step tree is uh, three months and in three months the futures price can either go up to 697101 or down to 51, 64, 25, okay, using the U and the D that we've investigated. Now, to show where those figures are coming from here, okay, um, we can take this down a notch and basically might note, I've estimated, if you like, a U and D here, and I've set out 60, and it's like 60 can go up, it can go down, what do I multiply 60 by? For it to go up, I multiply it by u. Okay. I get 69.71. To go up again to AC99, I multiply by u again. So multiplying by u again, I get AC.99. If it went down from the 60, okay, we multiply by d. So 60 multiplied by 8607, same as what I have over here 0 0.8607 I would have obtained 51 okay 51.64 and if it goes down again 44.91 and if it goes up and then down again it the, the tree is recombining and it goes back to 60 okay so that's a typical feature of the Cox Ross Rubenstein tree that the value of the the middle value here we get this recombining tree and we get the value of the futures price uh, at every second step the original futures price is the middle value okay in this Cox Ross Rubenstein uh, design okay so the next step then in working out the uh, futures value uh, working out the value of the option is we've got to get the terminal value of the option and we will cover that in the next video clip